Howdy, y'all. I just thought I'd come on here and we could chat, have a little coffee, and just kind of catch up. It's been kind of a bit of a busy weekend for me. Huh, Norma Jean? Yeah. Bit of a busy weekend. Yeah. Good girl. So, we attempted to install our new dishwasher this weekend. And, you know, it's pretty straightforward uh, kind of operation. It's supposed to be. So basically, you um, turn off the breaker and you just, you know, turn off the water, turn off the power, disconnect the old one, take it out, get the new one, reconnect it, put it in, turn everything back on. So we did that without, without too much trouble, although it did take like the majority of a day to get the old one undone and out and the new one. <laughs> Sorry, the boys are fighting over here. All of this has got them very frisky and it's raining. <clears throat> so we got the old one out, we got the new one in. We noticed that the new one was kind of not shutting exactly right, but you know, there was all kinds of adjustments to be made to it and stuff, so we did everything. We did all the troubleshooting. We made sure it was adjusted right to fit the cabinet. It wasn't hitting anything. It wasn't in too far, blah, 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 blah. So, basically, we bought a brand new dishwasher that has a faulty latch. So, we're going to have to take it back which is going to entail removing the new dishwasher, go, taking it all the way back with all the packaging and stuff that came with it, all the way back to Texarkana, returning it and either getting a replacement or ordering a replacement. Um, it shouldn't be too much trouble because my husband is all about extended warranties. And I'm always, you know, like, mm, I don't know, you know, maybe if it was up to me, I probably wouldn't get the extended warranty. He always gets the extended warranty. He gets the extra on top of everything warranty. And, you know, I'm usually glad because something like this usually happens. So anyway, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. We have the receipt and all the stuff that you need to take it back. So it hasn't been used. Although we hooked it up and it worked, except for it wouldn't work because the door wouldn't latch properly. So anyway, uh, it's going to be a hot minute before we get to take it back. Probably this coming weekend before we have the time to take it back. And, you know, when we figured out what was going on, it was pouring down rain. So we weren't going to take it back in the rain. And so we got all that done. We realized... Well, the dishwasher's okay. It just has a bad latch. We're going to have to take it back. Which was frustrating and annoying and disappointing, but, you know, it is what it is. So, um, we turned everything off and went to bed. And I woke up the next morning, and there was like a quarter inch of water all over my kitchen floor. My rug was saturated. I opened up the cabinets because, you know, we hadn't put anything back yet because we're going to have to undo all that stuff and take this one out, put another one in. So the, there was nothing under the cabinets to get wet, thank goodness. But it was all over the floor and my rug was totally saturated. And so I had to get the rug out, clean all the water up. Um, obviously, it was something to do with the hose which the new washer didn't come with a hose, so we thought the one that was connected to the old one was just fine, so we used it. But it was kind of like, kind of twisted, and we had to like manhandle it through a little series of holes behind there. And anyway, I think it's the hose that was leaking. Water all over the kitchen. Yay! So on top of the dishwasher, I hesitate to say disaster, but debacle. Then the kitchen got flooded overnight. And um, so, you know, I pulled the rug out and I cleaned it. And you know, you don't realize how, uh, you know, I feel like I keep my floors relatively clean. And then there's a like minor flood in here and my floors were dirty. That water whooshed out all kinds of stuff from cracks and crevices that I've been missing. So I had to clean the floor and clean the cabinets the rugs hanging on the back porch and of course as soon as I got everything hanging out there to dry it started pouring rain of course but that rug needed washed anyway so I, I didn't care 
I've been trying to have like a as good as possible attitude about it because I mean it doesn't do any good to get mad about stuff you can't help. I found a rug from another part of the house, put it in the kitchen, cleaned everything up. All my stuff's still, uh, you know, strode everywhere. My kitchen's kind of halfway torn apart and stuff. <clears throat> if I make any videos of the cats, you'll probably see things are a little hectic in the kitchen area right now. But anyway, that's what happened with the dishwasher. Uh, so, I will be still washing dishes by hand for at least the next week until we get this exchange made. And let's see, what else? Um, well... The uh, rain really let us see all the good work that the dude with the bulldozer did. Um, all the water just flowed right off of our land. Over the last few days, it's been raining, and it's been really nice to see that we're not having any buildup at any of the culverts. Everything is seeming to be graded properly in general. You know, there are some little dips and holes and bumps and stuff that'll have to, you know, be worked with, but... Looking good there. My tomato plants have been giving me approximately three to five tomatoes every day. So I have been trying to cook them. Now, I am trying to be on a carnivore diet, but I'm eating tomatoes, which is kind of bad. I mean, I shouldn't be eating the tomatoes. I should be avoiding all of that and just having uh, high fat meat and dairy. Uh, but... I can't resist them. I have them lined up. There's like 10 in my windowsill right now, ripening in the windowsill. And I'm sure there's more on the plants. And they're just producing like gangbusters all over the place. And so I'm cooking them. And I've, I've come up with lots of different ways to cook them. But I think I'm stalling my diet by doing so. I haven't really gained, but I'm not losing any. And this also, the coffee with the heavy cream in it, I'm drinking far too much of this. I'm having at least three or four cups a day. So I use three tablespoons of heavy cream in one of these big cups like this. And uh, so three tablespoons of heavy cream is 150 calories and 15 grams of fat. So, <clears throat> sorry my music's cutting in and out. I tell you my signal Let's not get started on that just yet. Anyway, so I'm drinking like four cups of coffee with that much cream in it every day. And that's like 600 calories. That's like a steak. 600 calories. And 60, let's see, yeah, 60 grams of fat. Uh, so I'm sabotaging myself with all the heavy cream in the coffee. And I'm having tomatoes. But y'all, I'm loving those tomatoes. They're, they're wonderful. And I feel like it's healthful to have them when they were on the plant like two minutes ago and then I'm preparing them for our meal. They're still warm from the sun. That's got to be good for you, but I've realized that I'm not going to be getting the results that I want while I'm having too much cream and eating fresh garden tomatoes. I'm not eating much. Two or three slit thick slices like fried with the breakfast or with some bacon like a BLT type thing with no bread. Um, and no lettuce either, just bacon and tomato, you know, or um, I've been fixing, like, I cut up a bunch of them, and I made a chili. It was really good. I cut up some, and I made, like, a ragu pasta sauce type, like a marinara sauce. But it was mostly meat and maybe two cups of chopped tomatoes. So, I'm not getting more than four, I mean, than one cup of fresh tomatoes a day and with the information I have one cup of fresh chopped tomato is approximately four net carbohydrates and about 40 calories and it doesn't really have any protein or fat to mention so that's not too bad but when you consider that I'm really aiming for zero carbohydrates and on many, many days, I would have zero carbohydrates except for the tomatoes. I'll either have a couple slices with breakfast or some kind of like, you know, I've been fixing them all kinds of ways. Like stuffed tomatoes and sliced tomatoes and stewed tomatoes and just any kind of way I can fix them. So, you know, my, my weight loss is not going to be fantastic. Also, on top of that, I've been working outside in the yard 
doing a lot of stuff outside and um, really getting overheated and sweating a lot and getting too hot and I'll come in and I'll take a break but I'm not really cooling my core body temperature down so I think I've been getting so hot regularly outside doing yard work that it is making me retain water my hands and feet feel puffy especially on the treadmill when I'm walking if I don't keep my hands up above my waist boy they sure swell and if I wear my compression socks I can really tell the difference so you know the swelling is an issue the coffee is an issue and then also the delicious vine ripened tomatoes I have like 20 yards from my door I'm not being able to resist those but it's not like it's chocolate you know it's just tomatoes but um i'm not seeing any drastic weight loss this week coming up what with the fluid retention and me not being able to resist coffee and hot tea because okay i, I started drinking hot tea to think i'd get away from the coffee but all i did was add hot tea to my diet i'm not drinking less coffee i'm just drinking more cream in the tea because i do you know hot tea with cream no sugar there's no sugar to be seen but if I expect any results, I'm going to have to cut back. <clears throat> I think the treadmill time has really helped me get back into the habit of exercising daily. And doing the vlogs has helped me like really stay accountable with it. Because even if I look terrible and I just really don't want to be on camera right then, I'll at least take like a video of my results and that has also helped me keep up with it in my book because sometimes I'll forget to write it down and then I'll, I'll be able to go back on my little video and look and see exactly what I did that day. I, I'm getting better about writing everything down though. So the treadmill time has made a difference in like the way I feel about like if I'm gonna sit around and feel like a couch potato and watch TV I will think I'll be like well I could go do my treadmill walking right now and another thing that really encourages me is I've been listening to audiobooks that I, I find really interesting and they're usually about 45 minutes long in between half an hour and an hour long and I only allow myself to listen to those really interesting stories that I want to listen to while I'm walking on the treadmill so that helps me really feel motivated to get in there. It's almost like, not quite, but almost like, all right, it's treadmill time. I get to go and listen to my story, you know. So that that really helps. So if, if you're thinking about starting an exercise routine like walking or something, pick something you really enjoy listening to and let that be your treat for during your exercise time. Because, man, that has helped me a lot. I mean, a real lot. So, let's see. Oh, yes. Uh, my internet is terrible right now. Uh, they're building a new tower. There's a tower, I guess it's probably about three miles from here, maybe two miles from here. There's a big, big tower. Okay, and then right around the corner, they've built a new tower. This is over the last couple of months. Okay, it doesn't have any of its stuff on it. It's just a tower with a light on it. They haven't put all the antennas and dishes and everything on it yet. So I don't think that's making any kind of difference right now. But I believe there's being some kind of adjustment in the carriers. Also, over the last couple of months, there's been construction all along the highway. And they are laying in the ground black and orange cables. Now, apparently, orange cables are for communication. So, these things, along with the fact that there was a dude that come up, oh, this has been a while, many weeks ago, maybe like two or three months ago, a dude come up in a big truck, you know, I thought it was like an electric company guy, and he said he was surveying for, you know, trying to get us some Wi-Fi out here, some internet. So, fingers crossed that this terrible signal that we're having right now and the weather doesn't help you know when, when it's thunderstorm and there's a lot of electrical stuff going on it doesn't help the signal at all even with the booster it is terrible out here um 
It's taken me like four hours to upload a 10 minute video or, or more even because sometimes it'll get uploaded to like 60 or 70 percent and then it'll say upload pending and then it'll drop back down to like 12 percent like it lost all of that. It's very frustrating. Um, so I am hoping and praying that even way out here where we are we will eventually get some Wi-Fi because I mean the sign all signs point to yes right <laughs> so I've got my fingers crossed you know and um, my husband and my son who both know more about it than I do I mean my son knows a lot about it because it's his job have been looking around at getting a computer of course there's, there's really no sense in getting one really until we get some kind of service that's available and the the stuff that's available right now the satellite service is slow and ridiculously expensive I would just rather go with what I've got as iffy as it is so um, hopefully you know we're looking around we found a couple of deals I don't really know what I need uh, my son knows what I need more than I do because editing videos is what he does for a living and um, Actually, uh, I was going to share this calendar with you guys that this is something that came from his office and it's a July to July calendar and it's got a lot of really great pictures in it. And uh, so anyway, this is what he does. He, he works for the fishing game and he does videos and he does mostly edi editing. Like he didn't take these steel shots. But, um, you know, his department edited and put together this calendar. And he has recently done a video that, like, it was almost his exclusively. He, he didn't have anybody else working on it, hardly at all. And um, so I've been meaning to send anybody that's interested, you know, some of my friends, if you want to see it, uh, and I have your contact information, let me know, and I'll, I'll uh, forward you that video that Forrest made so you can check it out. It's really cool. Um... So anyway, he knows all about editing and what you would need to like make videos like vlogs like this, the editing tools, because there's absolutely nothing edited on my channel except for the little trailer he made for me for my birthday. Um, I just set up a camera. I film. Sometimes I have music in the background, but it cuts in and out. You know, I mean, it's, I'm completely, totally amateur. I'm just sharing my life with some of my friends. And uh, so he's letting me know the different kind of tools I might need to do different kind of editing stuff. Uh, the stuff he did on that little trailer was so awesome that I was really impressed at how easy it was. Of course, he's got tons of equipment there that, you know, your average vlogger is not going to have access to. But still, um, there's a lot to be done on, on a fairly economical laptop or even a tablet, you know, would be better than... Uh, I just upload all my stuff through my phone and I have a very, um, it's just an Android, you know, it's just a regular phone. It's my first smartphone. I've never done much with computers. I've never actually owned a computer. So suffice it to say, I don't know anything about them. And uh, my channel may improve greatly if we get some Wi-Fi out here and I get some decent equipment. I've also been looking at some lights online. Actually, my husband's been looking at some lights like some umbrella lights and stuff, you know, to to light my little stuff that I do, but mainly for the paint room because the lighting in there, although it's really good for seeing colors of paint and working in there, the videos in there are not good. The fluorescent lights that we have all over the place, they just shine on everything. They cause those bright hot spots a wet black canvas is like a mirror you can see me with my camera there trying to record the painting and it's you know it's frustrating and I've not uploaded a lot of videos because you can see like the reflection of the room in the painting and stuff and it's kind of annoying when you're trying to watch the flow of the colors of the paint and you, you see like the big pirate flag skeleton in it so I would really like some diffused lights like some white umbrella lights or some black umbrella lights. I think they'd work really good. Also, I've been really, I have some projects I really want to get to and I haven't had time. 
I, well, I wouldn't have believed it a few years ago when I'm working two jobs and I've got a kid, you know, still in school and um, how busy I was and how much I got accomplished in a day on top of all of that. I, I never would have believed that I could be at home and not have a regular nine to five going on and be this busy. I mean, I'm all the time busy. It's hard for me to have time to do this little chatty thing, you know. Um, but I set myself all these tasks and things I need to do and by the time I get to doing all of them, the day is gone. So there's some jewelry, specific items of jewelry that I wanna make for some people. There's a, br a bracelet for Eden. It's got a cute little charm on it. There is an anklet for Kate that I have in mind that I want to do with some beautiful blue and green crystals and a painting. I've had the paint picked out for this painting for yonks, okay? I've been wanting to make this painting for Aaliyah. Uh, I have a technique in mind that I've never tried before and I'm really excited to try it and I really wanna get in there and spend some time in the paint room. I haven't found time. But what I'm wanting to do is I wanna take a, a long canvas and kind of like prop it up on one side and put my strainers, two strainers, on an incline like this so when I pour the paint in the strainers it runs down the canvas so I'm really wanting to try that and I'm hoping it's going to I'm going to put some uh, silicone in some of the colors so I'm hoping the colors will kind of blossom and look like a bright floral garden is what I'm going for with the bright colors and the green kind of maybe I'm thinking of maybe doing a green uh, negative space around the edge possibly I don't know I, I, it, I've never done it before so I'm wanting to do that uh, me and my husband have been wanting to play a game a Scrabble specific Scrabble game for a while we finally made time to do it last night it was so much fun um, so both of us are giant Star Trek nerds we love Star Trek we've seen everything uh, we're also a really big fan of the new animated series Lower Decks all of it. Love Star Trek. Um, complete trivia buff history of Star Trek. Uh, you know, we know all kinds of stuff, like the specific names of episodes and all kinds of stuff. So we're total Star Trek nerds. So we were playing Star Trek Scrabble. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but the point is to like, it's regular Scrabble but you try to pick words that are themed towards Star Trek. So anything's allowed within reason, um, names, places, proper names, you know, and, um, you know, uh, some other language like a little bit of Klingon, if it's spelled properly and you can prove it without the apostrophes, of course, we'll take it. So uh, we had a real fun time. We, we played two games back to back of Star Trek Scrabble and we had some really fantastic words on there. The next time we play, I'm going to take a picture or make a short video of the words that we have on the board because if you're a Star Trek fan, it's going to be super hilarious and uh, it's it's super fun and it's really difficult. It's very limiting. Uh, and we play with double letters, so normally you get eight letters, so we play with 16, so we can kind of, you know, and you, you can do anything like... It, if you can relate the word to Star Trek universe in some way, then it goes. And if it's, if it's spelled properly. And you'd be surprised how easily you can find out how uh, something in Klingon is spelled. Because it's all over the internet. Internet is full of Star Trek nerds. So, you can find it if you're interested in, in spelling something. Uh, like a weird name of a planet or a species of humanoids or whatever. Uh, the only thing that's a little limiting is there's no numerals and a lot of things in uh, Star Trek are labeled with numbers. So anyway, we finally got a chance to play. We've been wanting to for a while and you know, I couldn't find our Scrabble game and um, I really, I still don't know what happened to it, but at any rate, well, I got a new one so we were able to play uh, Star Trek Scrabble. And I, I think that's about it. I just wanted to catch you guys up on the dishwasher debacle and the minor flooding here in the house because of an old 
pipe, I guess, or hose is what it was. And, you know, the cats are doing fine. Let me show you this guy. Come here, brother. Oh, I think this guy's probably, he's probably about 20 pounds by now. Um, this was the tiny little kitten I brought in about a year ago. He had come up in the yard. And he was, he would have fit in this cup. No problem. And this guy is a giant now. And he has just not stopped growing. He is just a giant animal. And I believe he is still growing. He's far bigger than Howard, who is our biggest cat. And I think he's, he's probably 18 pounds now. He has gotten really big. And uh, I've, I'm constantly amazed. Every time I look at him, I'm like, whoa, he's huge. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, I'm going to go, you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and having some coffee. And until next time, y'all be sweet.